Hey there, are you a strength and conditioning coach looking to invest your team in Catapult, a GPS software, or perhaps you're an individual athlete footballer that is looking to invest in some objective measures to track your running performance on the weekends and see how your conditioning program is faring up over pre-season, then make sure to stick around, watch the whole presentation as I talk about the pros of my experience with using Catapult software, the, the player tech unit, which is under $200 a unit. So really cost effective. The cons are some of the issues that I've faced and systems I've put in place to counteract those issues in the software and the applications, both from a strength and conditioning coach's point of view, looking after a team and looking after individual athletes in rehab, as well as from the footballer's point of view that's um, looking at the GPS and um, comparing it with either their coach's feedback on their game or perhaps their own performance measure and, and metric on the game so stick around if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel we post weekly content uh, a few times a week all around football strength and conditioning and let's get straight into today's today's episode start with the positives so the pros uh, firstly it's really easy to use the catapults software uh, they have great customer service if you have any questions or queries and they're more than happy to help out. They've uh, got full-time sports scientists that have worked in the field as part of their team. I uh, actually recently had Matthew Pell on the podcast, and you can tell how big of a company uh, Catapult really is. Um, it's on the global stage, and they're working with all the big brands. So in terms of support uh, and practicality, really easy to use. That's a big tick. They're reliable for the most part. So when I say most part, at the moment, we've got 33 units. Um, and every so often, um, they, they use the live data um, by uh, using Bluetooth. So they've got a roughly about a 50 meter radius. So if you're standing in the middle of the ground and there's uh, a two hour rotation going on with drills on either wing, um, you should be covering most of the athletes. Uh, however, if you're standing on one far wing and there's another ground, maybe rehab going on the far side, you're not going to get that data uh, live. However, if you have a Wi Fi modem and all the staff are connected to player tech um, and they're connected to the same wi-fi or we did this at box hill then that increases your radius so if there's a, a player let's say on either end of the goals and either end of the wing and someone's standing in the middle you're easily covering the whole ground moving over to the cons of course you're going to have some um, so speed zones are slightly off I, I imagine this would be because they've created the um, live data and, and the download data to be all inclusive so age gender all different types of sports. So it's not specific to the speed zones that you would find in AFL with the research. So therefore you've got to just take into account when it says sprint distance, that's more likely high speed running. Um, so that's something that we're aware of when we're giving them targets. We actually don't know what their sprint distance is in the, in the session. There's no way of uh, quantifying that. However, we can quantify their high speed running to that 19.8 Ks per hour. Um, however, the 25.5 Ks uh, or... 26 k's 27 k's whatever your sprint um, zone is there isn't one um, in this case for the player tech unit so that's where you just got to um, use your eyes um, get an idea of how many strides you did in warm-up um, the times they're hitting in your conditioning and how hard they're going in the football which obviously you're not going to be able to be across that for everyone's application so if you're a strength and conditioning coach working with a team um, I'll start the team first. Intensity, so straight away you can have some targets for that individual. So everyone will work out what their max velocity is over pre-season and then you can get a percentage of what they're hitting with that and, and give them targets. So this you know session might be a feel-good session. It's craft fundamentals. We don't want to get above 80% max velocity. And then for our main training session, we want to get above 90%. And then every fortnight you might be wanting to get above 95% syringe exposure. Um, so you can have those targets in place, those systems in place. And what I've found by having that objective data live, so standing with them with the phone um, and giving them some feedback with individuals, particularly in rehab where you've got smaller groups, they actually get really, really good at being able to know what 31 Ks is. If you work in case per hour or speed, you know, it's eight metres per second. They they, they um, learn it just like that. they know what a, you know, a 60 K, 60 kilo back squat feels like. They know what a 31 K speed feels like so they start to know what their 90 percent is and they get really accurate and precise at hitting it um and, and you can you know obviously measure that with when you're downloading it but also what's popping up live if you're interested to learn more i actually did a platform review on player tech so make sure to head over to our blog post if you can't find it it should be really easy you just go to the resources section on our preparelikeapro.com website but if you're struggling to find it for whatever reason 
um, just hit me up. I think if you also Google platform review, player tech GPS, it, it'll pop up as well. But hit me up if you can't find it as I go into a little bit more detail around the pros and cons and, and application for Australian industry coaches. Thank you for listening to the presentation. If you've gone all this way and you're interested for more, then perhaps you'd be interested to join our academy. Our academy has two memberships, one for strength and conditioning coaches wanting to work in elite sport and also develop their own online coaching business and another membership for developing footballers wanting to learn how to eat, train and recover for football performance and reach your potential. So if you're interested to learn more, make sure to click this video to hear more about our academy. Thank you for listening. I'll see you on the next episode.